you, you took us around uh, a tour of rethinking the futures, rethinking modernities, and you have not only alerted us to the complications uh, about the futures of um, futures of modern art museums, and um, I'm sure the audience have many many questions for you. Thank you so much for your generosity in uh, in your willingness to answer questions. So the floor is open. Uh, please keep your questions short and pointed, uh, and please identify yourself before posing a question. Good evening, ma'am. My name is Shobhandana Dotto. You have mentioned that the visual economy, by the pronunciation of visual economy, what do, do you want to mention? This is my question. Thank you. Visual economy. What do you mean by visual economy? Visual economy, it means the, the many ways an art is visible. So the visual economy has to do, it's not just the uh, um, monetary economy. It has to do with uh, works which are, which are shown often or not often, to what audience? Is it shown in a private situation? Is it shown in a more open or public situation? This is what I mean by the, the uh, visual economy of the works. Oh. My question to you would be that uh, how um, feasible do you think is the model of a universal museum anymore? Because it's a model that is being questioned all over the world, right? Whether the older model of the World Museum, which could collect objects from all over the world, was by definition a European colonial enterprise. Now, when it comes to modern museums, uh, and I'm thinking about all the museums you mentioned, um, their narrative of the modern was, again, understandably, a Euro-American narrative of the modern. Now. You are mentioning the possibilities of making that a more global narrative, but you're saying it is impossible to just pick and choose one from each, and that would not really work. So do you think that for the Museum of Modern Art, as against the Museum of Contemporary, uh, if you have to now make it a more globally, if not inclusive, but a more globally calibrated narrative, then how would one go about it? You mentioned a number of Indian artists. You talked about other alternative models like there was in Shantinikathan, which were not a museum model, but a model for display. But I think it would be Im important to shed the idea that they can be a universal museum. I think it's almost impossible that they can be an idea that any museum can be universal in its in what no, I think, I think in what I said, um, sorry if it was not uh, obvious, but I don't believe in universal museums. I think that even those who were from the beginning conceived, and till the, till the next time, if I wanted to be provocative, I would say that the uh, classical universal museums are functioning much better than the supposed to be universal modern museums. You know, when you go to Metropolitan, when you go to Musée du Louvre, you can, of course, say it's not enough and this, uh, this part of the world is not, but you know, I think it's, it's much more uh, convincing and complete than uh, what you would uh, see of modern art, because from the very beginning, something didn't work out that you collect, you understand, you articulate what you know, what you are close to, and what you could say is that, and when I was mentioning uh, Latin America, and of course you could be, you should be more subtle because Mexico is very different from Brazil, and Argentina is another development model, and so on and so forth, but again, if we speak fast, we could say that on one hand, the uh, in Latin American countries did have very early, same more or less same time as uh, New York, museums of modern art, but it didn't work so well because the, uh, the social momentum uh, didn't work. So the museum opened, but people didn't take care. Uh, the audience was not uh, au rendezvous because, uh, you know, you, you need uh, when people are 
convenient, it would be difficult to invite them to the museum, and so on and so forth. So because you are, I mean, they are Lina Bobardi, Italian, Brazilian, because if it's a wonderful model of transcultural uh, modern project, Lina Bobardi, she was born in Italy, she left because of uh, Mussolini and fascism, she went to Brazil, and she invented the Museum of Modern Art San Paolo, the Museum of uh, Religious and uh, Popular uh, popular artists, uh, art from uh, Salvador da Bahia, and it's absolutely, even now, you look at that amazing uh, inventive project, so it's a little bit a different uh, issue. But when you come to um, most of the uh, countries, it's, uh, you know, you, you had many, many uh, situations which were not museums of modern art, and not much, so I'm not speaking about Lodz, because Lodz, it's a very special museum built in Poland for uh, this specific avant-garde, and it didn't develop much after. So again, you had many different uh, models, and you could say this one was very specific because it was not about uh, Spanish or, or British, it was Polish, okay? No, I think the point I was trying to make is that if we assume that the modern has very specific national contexts in all the part of the non-European world, they developed in very, very specific national anti-colonial, post-colonial contexts, then those national contexts have produced their own national and modern art museums in most of these countries. Now, how far that modern can measure up to the history of the modern has always been a big debate, right? It will always either fall short or it will, as you said, when you make a Hussein next to a Picasso, who is derivative and who is not, these questions will come. So I'm therefore saying that maybe, in the, as you rightly said, in a contemporary field, it is outside the museum, in the Biennales and series that, that various cultures are coming together. But the history of the modern remains far more contested in a way than the history of the contemporary, because the modern is still struggling to decenter the European modern and to say we have our own alternative, indigenous, powerful traditions of the modern, which may or may not measure to what you're laying out as the standard of, a, of the global modern. I think, therefore, the, the narrative of the modern and who the modern belongs to or who modernism belongs to will and always I, be a very contested narrative. And you but will I think never it's more complicated to... than that, you know, because I won't buy that, uh, you know, when you're in Paris, it's uh, first you have national situations uh, in each country. You have a very national... Uh, I could have, uh, I'm not interested in that, and I think it's very uh, between dangerous and uh, unnecessary. But you do have national context, you do have national histories, you do have uh, uh, national preferences, and you have to be uh, aware of that. But again, I think that these days, you know, it's also uh, clear that the situation is much more complex than that. You have in India probably a national project, but there is not just one. You have a certain number of these sensual voices. Uh, you have uh, artists uh, you can really understand in, a, in between different uh, uh, cultural heritage. And I think it's what we have uh, to work about. You know, I remember when I did, and it's not Indian, when I did the um, retrospective Eliot Sika, the Brazilian artist in Paris. And uh, we had many people coming, and they would look at the wonderful uh, mono, um, monochrome um, geometric paintings from the uh, uh, let's 50, they would say, oh, it's wonderful, but we did that. I never understood who were the we. We did that in the 30s. But you know, this is absolutely, you have to, to, to work out because first he knew very well what he was doing. Second, uh, the problem is not the relative of Mondrian. The problem is the reading of Mondrian, a radical Brazilian artist from the 60s, a gay, uh, from a very, very intellectual family, but not uh, happy few, not rich, was able to uh, articulate. And it's very difficult to say visibly because it's not, a, it's not an illustrative artist, so it's, it's more of a materialistic metaphor, you know, how he's uh, moving one uh, element from one uh, uh, social space to another. I think it's. Uh, you have to make people aware that uh, his uh, reading of Mondrian is a project. It's not derivative and so on and so forth. But when you go to Brazil, you will see a certain number of people, beginning with a few art historians, who are absolutely um, not at ease with his work. And they, if I wanted to speak fast, they want to re-essentialize. They want to re 
to put more volume again to the uh, sculptural tradition of uh, Brazil when the whole idea of Otisica was to deconstruct, to open, and to dematerialize. I think there is something in Otisica, which is people always speak about uh, Mondrian, but he was very well read, so he knew very well Malevich and the whole story of the avant-garde. And there is something in Otisica you could really it's much after, and it, it doesn't redo. You never redo. But which have to do with the pictorialization of the real space. And it's something which is, it, it's not helping to keep him in the uh, Brazilian national narrative. You see what I mean? And if there's, I think uh, between you and me, it would help one in India. You would have, and one is not enough for such a big country, but sometimes you begin with one, and after you see how far you can go. But it would really help when you would have in India museums of modern art with, not speaking about Korean, Indian, and I have no problem with that. You know, when I want to see uh, modern Chinese art, I know that it's hopeless to, <laughs> to stay in Paris and to, to articulate. You see what I mean? Because it's absolutely clear that you won't get this history from New York or from Paris or from London. They said what is quite important these days, because if not, it, we are leaving the work for the generation of the 23rd or 24th century. It's really time to deconstruct and to come, not to homogeneity, the, the, the opposite, but trying to work out certain modern uh, expressions in order to show the complexity of the modern and the trans transculturality of many, many modern projects. Because you can have, uh, on one side, the idiosyncratic, and sometimes the idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic, sorry, idiosyncratic, has to do with the materiality, the special, the, the social, political, and material, and material momentum of the culture. But this doesn't mean that you can't articulate with another uh, expression, and that it's not necessarily um, helping to keep the artist rigidly in a national uh, narrative. You know, in, in India, you could say that uh, it could be interesting to work with the many, many artists who have been very dissensual to the national narrative. And you do have a good collection of very dissensual uh, Indian artists in many different ways. So, you know, I think it's quite uh, important because uh, the point is, um, is not to, to be uh, exhaustive. I don't believe in exhaustivity. It's absolutely impossible. But I think that we, we have to uh, complexify the reading of the modern moment and to, to be very attentive to what an artist did. And sometimes it's not to compare to the ah, it is Brazilian, but it does the same. No, not at all. But to show, coming from very different uh, perspectives, the complexity of the modern project. And again, when you would go back to Iraq, and this is more um, uh, clear for architecture, a modernism without modernity. And uh, as we have no Arab uh, colleagues in the room, I would also say that it's something which uh, you could ask when you look at Jawad Salim. I'm closing the chapter, temporarily. Questions? Other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, I'm one of the artists in Calcutta. My name is Elina Monik. Uh, we have... Uh, we don't really have uh, museums of modern art in Calcutta. There is one and some are coming up. But uh, there are possibility of uh, having more museums because there are beautiful old houses which we don't have the consciousness, no consciousness from the government and many of the heritage buildings are already broken and uh, people are breaking heritage buildings and making uh, new architectures, new buildings. But the consciousness to preserve the old architecture is not there and uh, there are a uh, number of folk and tribal art here. Uh, what's your, one what's your question? What's the question? Yeah, the question is one, uh, the public consciousness is not here, it's lacking. And uh, one very beautiful museum, it, it was almost closed down, I don't know the current situation, the Guru Shada Museum, it had wonderful collection, but not absolutely modern works, but uh, it had a wonderful pot, potter chitras and uh, kathas. We're it's still tradition. waiting for your question. Yeah, we don't, at this stage, we don't want long comments on the state of the field. We just want a question. Do you yeah, have a question? Uh, what is the, uh, I think we need the consciousness to preserve 
the already existing things and uh, which is lacking in Kolkata or uh, in many cities in India there are lots of things but uh, it's not in a uh, it's not preserved or it's not in the museums so uh, I don't think that ends with a question but still I don't also think anybody in this room would differ from from what you propose yes uh, yes Uh, we are so used to other kinds of lectures and I came with very different uh, idea altogether. But I was wondering, uh, why was it not possible or, or did you deliberately omit uh, no visual presentations because so much of it is left our imagination which I may be totally wrong about thinking when uh, Tapati, for example, spoke just now about uh, you know, making it universal. It never struck me. And so where and how does modernism begin? So is it possible through visuals to uh, show to the public like us uh, what exactly uh, you are trying to say? Then it becomes very clear in our mind, you know, what a modern art museum would look like. Uh, I said from the beginning that I was absolutely not there for giving you a model. And I said from the beginning that I don't trust the iconic model. It's a possibility. MoMA is a possibility. My museum is a possibility. It's not in any case a model and it shouldn't be a model. It's one. But how do you, how do you, how do you show in a PowerPoint the difference between the notion of Museum of Modern Art, especially when you explain that the Museum of Modern Art is a dispositive. So it's not a specific building. It's a dispositive, cultural dispositive, meaning a place, a collection, constitution of an audience. This is a dispositive. And there is another one, which is not at all, as far as I know, discussed. Of course, everybody or people educated knows know what is a museum. But very few people I know really noticed that the model or the way many non-Euro-American modernism developed, developed under the model of the museum. No building, no collection, and the meeting of the muse. You know, I mean, what, what does it, uh, I don't think it would have changed a lot if I had shown uh, groups of artists together under the trees of Chantilly Ketan or in, uh, in a coffee shop. You know, I think these days uh, there is a lack of uh, thinking. And it's really nice. I mean, I could show the collection of my museum. I never do that. I'm just using the positives when I have to introduce an exhibition I did. No, Otsika could be, because not everybody knows Elio Otsika, by the way, one of the major artists of the century, uh, 20s. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because I think it's really like, uh, it's absolutely uh, important to be able to discuss models, because, you know, what, what, would, what would be the next step? That people, you have a certain number of problems in, uh, in India with the Museum of Modern Art, again, you see that there are some, and it's a very, uh, very positive discussions and possibilities, and, but you know, up till now, it's, not, it's very undecided. And my point is that the solution is surely not to sell a Guggenheim model, or a MoMA model, or a Bobo model. This is not the point. The point, the, the, the model has to be worked out out of the, uh, the Iketnung, the conditions, what, what, what has been done, because a certain number of things have been done quite well, and how do, do you move from there? You know, because I don't think when I would show, and I'm absolutely, in the last 20 years, I've been very critical of many museums which have been built, it's wonderful for the architects, beautiful iconic building, and very poor when you want to really work with, uh, the artist might be dead, but we are working with living works. This is what people could understand. An artist might be dead, but the works are alive. And not necessarily happy, uh, works from the 20s or the 30s, not necessarily happy in a brand uh, new architecture, which is most of the time, because you know I'm not ingenuous, I'm in the business for many years, and most of the time designed for the uh, grandiose benefit of the city or the country or the uh, machines, and not necessarily for the works, and I know enough uh, architects who ask to open the museum empty. 
you know, I won't mention them because I want to be nice tonight, but you know, when our fight goes that you open your museum empty for not having the, <laughs> the works uh, uh, polluting your wonderful architecture. So that's what I wanted, uh, you know, it's, it's not really like uh, when we had no uh, pictures either in Goethe because we were discussing really this positive, so we move from now. So the only one, because you know, I don't want to insult the Indian people when I speak about Hussain, you know, probably many more work than I do. Uh, when we speak about the 47 generation, you know, or generation uh, group, you know many more uh, artists than I do, and so on and so forth. So I think it's really... Uh, myself, A.K. Dutta. Ma'am, thank you for your valued lecture. But I have got only a very short question. Does the definition of modern art only relates to the time frame, or it may be related to the theme of the art form also? Does the definition of the modern relate to the time frame? Can you put a specific time frame to the concept of the modern, or does it connect with the theme of whatever you are doing, exhibitions, art movements, etc.? Awesome. You know, we all agree that uh, the modern began at least when you are speaking about modern art, you speak about second half of the, 20th, of the 19th century, up till and after it depends on the countries, or I prefer to speak in terms of geocultural spaces, because you know countries can, can move, can, uh, can disappear, can we, and so I prefer to speak in terms of uh, uh, geocultural zones, which are, you know, working on a longer term. And uh, this is absolutely clear for any collection in India or wherever, modern, second half of 19th century, the, the, the works of art, the modern moment. But after, you know, when you speak about the, the beginning of the modern in um, culture, it's before. Then in different countries, it may be different time frame. Does it like that? I think, the, again, I try to explain that the modern, you know, the development of the